Okay, without any delay, let's get started with our second session on the topic Unhealing the Diverse Roles Within Medical Affairs Post Family. Uh, it's immense pleasure to welcome our speaker, Dr. Robin N. Rajan, sir, Fandi, MBA, who is the Senior Executive and Local CD Project Manager and Medical Affair at Biocon Biologics at Bangalore. Welcome, sir. Hi, all. Thank you. Just a second. Give me a second. Yeah. Hi, Saumia. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, Dr. Robin. Hi, hi. So, can we start now? Yes, sir. Great, great. Yeah. So, um, let me share my screen uh, in between. And then I will start with the intro. Just a second. Sorry, you know it's a, it's a, you know again a weekend and you know like uh, Sundays we will be occupied uh, you know with our personal things. So that's why I just got a little delay. But uh, you know I won't take much time. But I will try to you know um, answer your questions and you know um, solve or get some feedback from you, uh, you know, like how we can, you know, grow uh, in the field um, of medical affairs. So can anyone confirm, uh, you know, whether my screen is visible or not? Visible, sir. OK, great, great. Thank you. So let me introduce myself uh, or, uh, you know, uh, myself, uh, uh, Robin. And I am working as a local uh, clinical development project manager uh, in medical affairs uh, in Biocon Biologics um, headquarters in Bangalore. And um, it's been um, three years now in the field of medical affairs um, where I see a lot of transition, uh, you know, uh, from the earlier part to now. Uh, or the current uh, 2023, where pharmacies plays a great role, you know, in the medical affairs. So it's great pleasure to, you know, meet you, young birds, uh, and you know, uh, interact and um, you know, get your um, queries or get your things, you know, uh, done in meantime. And also, um, uh, it's um, you know, thanks for inviting me to the session and. Uh, um looking forward to have a good collaboration with the Psycon team and uh, in future also um probably you know um i usually mentor students uh, on a personal way or you know or some you know the recommendations so um going forward we'll see you know how we can help each other because as we know our you know stream or our industry i mean fraternity is facing a lot of challenges in the way of jobs i'm saying uh, so uh, where you know you can make a difference that that's what i would say or i'm the experience in, in front of you so let's uh and um uh, going okay a little, little more intro if you want then you know um, i'm working in uh, medical affairs uh, handling oncology therapeutic area and supporting immunology as well but oncology is my main area and uh, where um, i handle uh, project management which includes clinical trials not specifically because there is a clinical development team to do all the trials but all the phase four trial or post marketing trials um, or uh, you know before uh, trials uh, then rwe uh, you know that's called real world evidence studies which i'm going you know uh, detail in the slides because it's maybe you know um, you are aware of the rwe but uh, to get more of the thing because when i was studying i was not much you know um, like uh, you know into the rwe or 
not being very known, but uh, you know, seeing last five years in India, the you know the the, the uh, strategy of RWS changed, and you know, uh, the regulatory part plays a great a great role in RWE. So I'm just thinking, or my own perspective, I'd say RWE will change the you know uh, future. Sorry, if anyone speak, uh, is anyone speaking now? No, OK, thank you. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so. Um, I was saying about, uh, I mean, um, RCT and RWE uh, studies, and then I'm handling um, publication as well, publication which includes, you know, medical writing uh, for the chaos or the HCPs and for the industry peoples then um, i'm working um, again in the new product evaluation where you know my organization my company wants to you know um, i mean invent or develop a new product so invent means it can be a you know innovation or it can be you know our own innovation molecule but you know development of other drugs or products is like you know getting brands you know once the patent is over from the you know it uh, then you know uh, anyone can you know uh, do the business so you know whether our my organization wants to do or not it's a call from the medical affairs so you know going forward we'll see you know what are the things we have in medical affairs i tried you know i have a lot of slides but i'll try to you know um, i mean uh, skip uh, the uh, i mean not needed one and try to focus on your questions more than you know uh, getting a lot of uh, you know theoretical so so if you have any questions uh, you know you can just unmute and speak i would appreciate that uh, or you know we will wait for the uh, last uh, 10 minutes or something you know to get your questions and uh, also um, i would suggest the organ i mean coordinators to stop me if i am you know getting late in uh, in, spe in in my uh, speaking section thanks so yeah so who are we? I, I know, like, you know, I mean, we all know what are we or what you are doing or what I'm doing. So, but, you know, just I want to get this slide. Why means, you know, uh, to know the importance of PharmD because uh, when you're studying or when you're completed, I'm not sure you all completed or not, but if you're studying also, you will be in a confusion why you take PharmD or, you know, why this course has, you know, you have been opted or something. This comes a question for many of the students, but they usually find answers at the end of the day, I means end of the, you know, internship or something uh, by good mentors or the good faculties you have or, you know, good organizations like Zygon or the other, you know, RX doctors we have. So uh, who are we? We are farm, you know, family people who has got more hospital exposure as compared to the rest. So um, we can put, you know, doctor prefix um, and we have a one year of internship and has better competence. So why I had made note to all those four points in means if you see, all those four points is competing to an another field or another fraternity, which is like, you know, M I mean, uh, medical doctors or MBBS, uh, I mean, um, guys, or even the MD people. So, you know, uh, because in medical affairs, our competitors are always, we will be, you know, our colleagues will be from MBBS or other, you know, MD pharmacology, or uh, okay, there are other also BAMS or uh, uh, MDS, BDS, everything. But most mostly we can see it's MBBS and you know mostly MD also from in pharmacology or other department as well. So you know, telling the people you know we have also did the same. Uh, you know the exposure or you know the dignity or the degree or the internship or the pro, you know there's no I mean skillful knowledge we have. And now what we have in addition that I always say is that, you know, uh, we study more about the, you know, drugs or the pharmacology, not only the mechanism of action, it's all, you know, about from the solubility or with or the physical properties to the safety. I mean, the pharmacovigilance uh, yeah, in middle of the everything research or the trials, everything we learned in our academics. So that's what we have in extra, you know, when we are in a competitive with the, uh, you know, other uh, uh, academic people um, to 
get in the medical affairs or being in the medical affairs. Now, no medical, no business. It's a book written by Dr. Viraj Suvan. He's the you know uh, chief medical officer at Roche from our who was my you know uh, super boss or my yeah um, my. Um, manager to manager um, in Biocon one year before, and he has now been, you know, um, been in the great position like, you know, chief medical officer of Roche India Pharma um, in Mumbai. So he, uh, this is, uh, you know, from his book, uh, from his slides I had taken, and the book is available in Amazon also, no medical, no business. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting, small book, you know, on his experience he has written uh, with a great knowledge. So um, the why I has taken is that, you know, the word it itself, it's saying, you know, no medical, uh, you know, no business. Just a second. So your mic is muted. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So I'll repeat again. So let's cut into two pieces. No medical, no business. No medical means if you know the medical, you know, you know the business of the pharmaceutical industry. And I have a, you know, something uh, to be uh, added in this slide. Just cut, you know, um, K and W, or if it's pronounced like it's no, no medical. So uh, this the spelling of no, and no is the same also, right? So I would read it in the other way. No medical means no business. So it's not about the understanding medical. It's about, you know, if you don't have a medical team or if you don't have a medical people in your organization, then there is no business in the pharmaceutical industry. That much value or that much, you know, importance we have or the medical affairs place in the pharmaceutical industry. And that's let's go to the next slide on your business. So, you know, um, I would say, you know, again, if it's a business, then you will say, okay, you know, okay, I'm a family guy. I'm not into, you know, sales or marketing or I'm not a, you know, um, like medical rep or someone to know the business or being in the sales. But no, it's not like that. Being in the medical, you should be knowing everything for the molecule. It's not about the pharmacology you are knowing. It's always related to the commercial aspect in the business, as you know. So our business is to do the I mean, medical rest, you know, the commercial part they will do. And, you know, MBA will be an addition degree, you know, uh, for going, um, like, you know, seeing the future. Uh, it will be a great addition for the management role or getting the promotions or, you know, um, or handling a lot of people in the team. Um, it will be great addition in the pharma um, for growing ourselves. And this MBA, you know, I would just um, like just uh, read it as medical and business advisor. So, you know, we speak medical and we advise the business to get the profit or to get the, you know, commercial done. And if the business is not happening, that's the answer. We should find the solutions, we should find the strategies to get back the business. How? I mean, I will uh, go in detail in the slides. Now comes the marketing. So again, marketing is a separate thing in the you know industry. Uh, maybe you know your colleagues, I mean your friends or people who are joined in a, um, sales and marketing will be knowing mu much better. But medical affairs, I usually call, you know, it's a medical marketing uh, because since business I am interested, so I speak in the medical marketing. We speak medical and thus we do market which can help the commercial. So market is a very important thing in the you know functioning not only for us for either in the oil industry. So we do medical marketing which help the commercial. Um, now you know I just quickly go into you know other uh, slide why because um, just to get you understand 
what I'm going to say in the other slides. Maybe you are aware of the phases of clinical development or clinical uh, trials. So just quickly going into, there are four trials we have, phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. Phase one is the clinical trial, you know, where the new molecule is just developed or innovated by our scientists. Very less pop, I mean, healthy or not healthy, or new, very less populated. It's go to uh, when we get once we get the approval, uh, we will go to the you know regulatory for the next phase, where we have a lot of uh, you know um, volunteers or uh, participants to participate in the clinical trial, and it also reveals the efficacy of the drug or what the you know scientist has developed. If we succeed in the NDA application, we will go for the phase three, where is the crucial, you know, data evolving, which is a large number of population, not into a specific area. It can be, you know, global as well. It, I mean, that I mean, it should not be in your Chennai. It should be also from the Canada's Canada as well, the patients. So phase three, you know, plays a greater role in the global market where after phase three, the drug comes to the market, get it commercialized when we can purchase from the medical store or the hospitals. Now, phase four, it is called post market surveys, which is a great interesting thing to know more about the safety and efficacy plus a new indication, uh, which means like, you know, we have developed a drug for B disease. Now, we are doing phase four trial or while in the phase four trial, you know, we are exploring more of more of other indication that it is not. Being used for the B disease, it can be used for other disease as well. So then, you know, on this PMS studies only, we will get to understand more indications. Then we apply for, you know, um, trials application for the regulatory and we get it for the other indication. So which means, like, you know, now we have a 10 percentage of shares or in particular disease. Now my drug is getting into other. Disease as well, so I'm getting commercial from the other disease as well. So, you know, because of my strategy or because of the medical office strategy, the company is getting to more business. The company is getting, you know, more commercialized globally. And from the evidence base to the practice, which means like, you know, those phase one, phase two, phase three are the evidence you know, we are getting some evidence for the approval. Now, after phase four, you know, doctors practice in their hospitals and that is called practice. So because of this phase three or phase trials data, doctors are consulting patients and giving our drugs, which you can commercialize. Data. Sorry, Mike is muted. Sorry, someone has muted. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. So please, you know, uh, like uh, unmute and speak if I am, uh, you know, in mute. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so. Um, Yeah, I was saying about market research where, you know, we research about the scope of the drug, whether it will be good for our patients, whether we will get money. I mean, we means the, I'm always saying we means the company. OK, so the company gets the commercial or the, you know, profit or the, you know, the money from the drug after saving. So those research or those studies are called marker research where we do medical. You know, once the you know drug should be come in the market, we are helping the business to get in market. Thus they get the money. So we place a great role, you know, to get the commercial done by researching the drug, which is called RCT and RW. So RCT means randomized clinical trial and RW is real evidence, which I am going detail in the few slides. 
now real world evidence uh, this also i will go deep deeply in the few slides later um, external expert engagements uh, which means free medical medical relationship management and external medical affairs are other people like you know government academia or medical society so i am a internal medical affair guy who you know did uh, do for the company and we can call in a government of uh, medical societies like you know a tata or manipal or those kind of institutions a medical society where they also help us to build the drug say for example investigator initiated studies those doctors from the tata or doctors doctors from the you know those kind of societies or organizations take the trials you know on view I mean, for us and do the trials and get the data and thus you know we are getting the business so we are the collaboration people to externally and internally for get the things done and uh, science for safety again yeah, pharmaco vigilance is with you when you cross the road and even you know when you reach the other side so you know um safety is not about in the phase one two or three trials safety is everywhere in the real world or in the daily practice or wherever and you are familiar with the safety or you have did a lot of things in the safety side like you know area reporting or uh, or uh, you know uh, reporting writing area form to pba those kind of activities you have you may have done or not but so those things if you are doing the same thing you know in industry we are also doing or we are also getting the feedback from the patients uh, from the MICC or medical information call center. So patients call, they say the safety issues or they mail the safety issues or, you know, uh, they write the ADR form and submit into the website. You know, every company has their own website, which is again managed by medical affairs only. So those are, you know, those are the, uh, uh, you know, forms where patients or the, you know, the patients um, caretaker can write the safety issues and we you know uh, sort it or we focus on the safety and we also report to the pvpa compliance as a seatbelt again you know do every job you know in the compliance so if you are against the you know like against the um, i would say you now there are a lot of rules in india you know uh, under medical council of india that bribery or giving grants or any any kind of you know um i would say gift or anything is like you know it is all being prohibited in india so the medical affairs only looks after whether it is all in compliance or not if it is not then you know the if the regulatory body or the government will ask the company to shut down or ask questions or do inspection inspects thus you know they lost the business or they should shut down. So we plays in a greater role in the complaints also that you know every actions or the industry, pharmaceutical industry is working under the complaints as per the rules in the particular country. And now comes the value of medical affairs. So this is the you know photo of the picture taken from the same book written by Dr. Viraj. Uh, that you know if I if I elaborate in little more what is medical affairs, um, you can see three tires in the auto ratio. So um, where, you know, front tire, I mean, drives a great role because it's been, I mean, being the first front row, it's the most important thing. So in pharmaceutical industry, sales plays a great role because they generate revenue or income. And now for the sales, who supports or who is the, you know, backbone for the sales means we medical, or the medical and the marketing people. So those, you know, yeah. So um, those two tires being in the you know, backbone of the sales get the things done. So we are not a part of the business. We are in the business. That's what I say, you know, uh, we uh, never say business means like, you know, okay, MB people or kind. I mean, uh, marketing people only do this. No. We also in the business getting collaborated with the marketing guy, getting collaborated with the sales team, getting revenue for the company. Now, what are the skills you know you want? First important thing is the communication skill. 
you know, um, we should say that that's the emotional recognition of your customer. So your customer can be a doctor from your hospital or a pharmacy in charge or a stakeholders in the government, like regulatory people, DCGI or anything. And we are the, you know, people who are being collaborated with these stakeholders, communicating about our drugs and get the business. So for every HCP or for any activities, we always been in the complaints that, you know, our actions or our, you know, sharing of knowledge should not, you know, apart from the uh, return or being in the real world evidence that, you know, I can't say any blah blah things at all. It should be thoroughly from the evidence that I do have. Because those stakeholders who are hearing me will ask their questions because they are super in their, you know, um, in their consultation. So they do have a lot of things to question us that your molecule is, you know, the, this or that or whatever. So we are the point of contact to answer their queries or give information or take the evidences. So our communication is a very important thing, um, which plays, you know, a good uh, future in medical affairs. Now coming to outcome research again, um, I, I won't go detailed, just uh, getting for your knowledge. Um, what is the outcome for doing research or what is the outcome for doing your project? I mean, it's not, please don't say it just for the, you know, college I'm doing. No, but you know, you are doing some studies and you are getting an outcome or a result. And the most important part is that since you are, you are doing an observation studies in, in a college, this will help us the business. I mean, the pharmaceutical company, say, for example, you're doing something in paracetamol. Those brands, uh, you know, they have the paracetamol. Those companies who brands the paracetamol, they will be benefited from your paper, research paper. If you do uh, something which out of their evidences. So research is something always doing in the real world. That's what I was saying. Real world evidence is a very important thing. And maybe you are not uh, he being heard so much of time, but you are doing this because your project is a real world evidence. That's what I would say, because that's our observation studies that was taken from the, you know, the live patients or you are taken from the data, which is in the I mean, record. So if it is a real world, then you are kind of seeing the patients. Yeah, you are noting all the, you know, um, boy, uh, all the data to be taken for the study. OK, so you are taking you know, all the data for your study and you are analyzing and you are publishing or uh, you know, you, are, you are making it in a book for the university or whatever. So once you publish, you know, that data will be always useful for the pharmaceutical company which sells that drug. So, you know, you are being part of the uh, RWE now. You are being part of the research now. And now, you know, all these knowledge will help you in the medical affairs or in the industry to do more evidences or to get you know, collaborative with your college and do something else or support them by getting the data you will be benefited or medical affairs will be benefited now you know since i say a lot of more medical affairs you will be having a doubt like, like you know medical representative i am a medical representative what do you, you know what is the difference mainly okay medical representative you know is, is a guy or a profession who you know where the buyers know more than the seller, which means like, you know, they are the representative from the company to sell the drug. They should not speak any medical. They should not be, speak any science. They are just seeing the doctor and they get the business and their conversation will be pakka commercial only. But for getting that prescription or getting that, you know, science, the medical people has to go or interact with the HCPs or KOL, and they get knowledge, they ask questions, we answer their queries, and we, you know, we just, it's not, it's not called influence, but it's called, you know, convince the doctor that the particular drug is more effective or the particular drug is the solution for the particular therapy, therapeutic area, or the disease, or the, you know, uh, the uh, area of the disease. And getting that doctor convinced means 
they will get the business. The doctor will prescribe your drug and medical representative will be a easy job because they don't just want to say, hi, doctor, how are you? You know, you are getting prescription because you do have a great data or great knowledge or great evidences from the drug, which the medical affairs people does. And now comes, you know, CME. If you see, you know, um, in the third line, it's called continuum medical education. So you are familiar with this uh, word continuum, continuum medical education, uh, where it's always playing a greater role in the medical affairs that we do always interact with the doctors, either by, you know, a webinar or a conference or a symposium or any events. They come, you know, we explain our medical thing or they share their medical experience and there's a country, you know, there is a um, sh knowledge sharing happens, which we are benefited with a new, you know, new information or new strategy or new any evidences where doctors are benefited, you know, they are well knowledge of the drug or their results, their queries in this particular conferences. So these are all you know activities we are doing, uh, you know, medical people uh, or medical affairs people are doing, which is away from the field people or the medical representative, MR people, like, you know, sales people. So we are the people or we are the actual representative who is portraying the drug to the doctor. Now, you know, I'm just going to the next section where the roles or the jobs, you know, you are having in the medical affairs and what is that or what you're going to do? Well, very simple. I'll just explain. One is the MSL. So it's just a full form is medical science liaison. Um, who is a disease matter expert in the medical affairs department of the pharmaceutical company who have a strong scientific or the you know, medical knowledge, and he should be from a clinical background also. And uh, now, you know, you get to understand, you know, what are the things you can do. So medical affairs department have a role of MSL or medical science relation where pharmacies or we can opt. So what they do? Okay, so going to the history, it, it is starting 1967 from, you know, Abjon. Abjon means um, Pfizer, the previous one. Pfizer was owning the Abjon business. Now it has taken to Viatris. Viatris has been taken to by Biocon now. So Abjon Pharmaceutical 1967, it has started. And, you know, uh, first MSL came by 1967. Those times, um, I when I read some old books, I go to understand um, those MSLs are the doctors, uh, you know, the retired doctors who are doing as a consultant to the pharmaceutical company because either their friends or the colleagues will be still prescribing or still the physicians in the hospital or their students or juniors are the consultants now. They are retired. So now what is their role? They come, they will get a degree, you know, a respect in the particular cabin. They come and they speak on the, um, um, the drug or the particular company. So they being as a consultant, they will speak on the particular drug. So since it is like their colleagues, ex-colleagues or their, you know, their senior who is coming with, you know, a evidence or a information, it will it can influence the consultant to get the knowledge and to prescribe that. So that was the, you know, history, how the MSL or the, you know, uh, medical advisor evolved, um, which is from US. Now, seeing in 2019 or after it's been you know a um, lot of companies from india is taking farm d's so why i'm saying farm d means before the trend was mbbs bounds bhms bds mds or other doctors apart from the farm d's were in the msl role no but seeing in last five years i see a great change uh, where you know all of you can be also part of medical affairs anytime. So getting into the you know roles of the medical science license MSL, you know, they help the products 
uh, they help you know ensure that the products are utilized effectively in the field, which means our, my patients are benefited from my drug that I had to ensure. And I serve as a, in a scientific peer or resource within the medical community. Say, for example, Manipal doctor have a doubt or have a, you know, um, get some science evidences. I am being the point of contact, giving, you know, all the information, what he want, all the resources, what he needs. Now, what other primary roles are to establish a maintain peer relationship with the lead physician or KOLs. So now a new word came KOL, key opinion leaders. Key opinion leaders are, you know, are someone who is an expert or who can influence the other doctors. Say, for example, if, say, if, if Tamil Nadu have a 500, you know, doctors um, totally out of maybe, you know, 50 will be KOLs. Because they are, they are super doctors. We have, I mean, we also say no. That doctor is super. This doctor is awesome. Why it means maybe their experience or they maybe they are you know the good name what we hear from others. So those people are called KOLs. So we have a better relationship. We means medical affairs people only have the better relationship with these KOLs. Thus, you know, get transferred to the other 450 doctors. Like you know, yeah, those 50 other KOLs we focus or have a regular uh, relationship. With these doctors, thus you know we will get connected to those 450 as well. How means those 50 are being known in the city or the country or the state, so the rest 450 also know what he's what that doctor is prescribing or what new information has come from that doctor. Now in a lot of responsibilities, but um, you know uh, just detailing a couple of things that you know you have to identify, you have to map, you have to prof you know profile the doctors in your area. Which means if Chennai, I have to target who is the best doctor in the oncology or, you know, OK, in coming to again oncology, I'd say there are medical radiation and surgical. So my, I mean, ours are the you know, medical or the, it's not about surgery or it's not about the, you know, uh, other stuff. It's a medical oncology. So I have to target, I have to profile, get the profile of the medical oncology from the Chennai or from the, you know, particular state where sales will be now speaking the commission. Now I am a key where I being in the organization. Get insights from there, which means I go and meet doctors, get their information, get their expertise, get their queries. Then I come back to my organization, my office and share with my internal or stakeholder, I mean external stakeholders where a renovation or you know a expansion of the molecule or you know a issue or a serious issue is being identified. So as a point of contact, we initiate the you know the discussion which can help the company or which can help the the patient fraternity or the society because that particular issue will be a you know, greater challenge in the later time where we came to know from a doctor from Chennai and now you know, we go, go into our business, uh, our people, our scientists and our commercial people like we say that this is a serious issue which has to be sorted. Otherwise, the you know, the society or the patient fraternity is been affecting. Then we make the you know change or we make the resolution or the solution. And get benefited to the patient and doctors also will be happy. Now, <clears throat> Uh, just you know, I'm uh, taking in the MNCs where they hire, uh, you know, MSLs. But just uh, seeing in the uh, money aspect, I would say this is uh, not the true, but it is more of what I'm writing. I just you know, um, um, uh, just taken the freshers' jobs only. But if you see, uh, you know, the MNCs they do have the um, you know revenue of more, so that you know your package also will be high. So some of the MNCs are, you know, Nova, Novartis, AstraZeneca, Sanofi, Cipla, Abbott, Pfizer, you know, uh, then uh, Sano, um, then we have Viatris, Mylan, then other all companies where, you know, pharmacists are working or we do have role. So if you see the those MNCs, apart from India, you know, other all the countries, those companies, you know, 
pharmacies are the people who is working in the medical affairs. Either, you know, as per their pro uh, protocol, pharmacies can do their internship in pharmaceutical industry. So they are doing, you know, um, internship in the pharma Sanofi or particular Novartis or any company, they are getting the job in the medical affairs. But that's not the scenario in India. That's what I'm saying. This is MNC. This is not you know, Indian uh, company. MNCs do they have a culture, but in Indian scenario, it is not the same. So now a change has happened from 2019 in where you know there are a lot of families working at this kind of companies or more of the other companies as well now how who can you know how can the msl make a difference so first i would say you know just maximize the product life cycle management um what is called maximize the product life cycle management new product ideas newer combination therapies newer indication newer drug delivery methods so you know these all things are being done by the MSL because MSL is being discussed to the doctors, being a bridge between patients and doctors. You know, then they get a newer knowledge that you know my drug plus other drug giving a better you know efficacy in the therapy. Then we do that trial also or new indicators. I said no. These are all the other things MSLs do. And second, you know. Uh, just MSLs do mainly is the real world clinical data or RWE. Um, RWE means those stakeholders who are having, you know, a, be a build relationship, listen, understand, collect data. I, I just call it as a skills which you have to form. Yeah, so now what is called real world evidence um, or RWE? I would say, you know, are we ready? Means like, you know, reversing that, are we ready for the real world evidence or the new transformation? Um, yeah, clinical decision making comes from either two things, either randomized clinical trial or observation registries. Those both are evidence based and we always see randomized trials, you know, in the decision making. And these observation studies we conduct in uh, projects or they do in uh, their, uh, I mean, their own practice. But, you know, if you see the disadvantage in the randomized trial, you know, okay, so if you see the disadvantage, you know, there are a lot of hypotheses which cannot be randomized, which means the randomized clinical trial have a particular population of people, right? Um, particular population of people means there is an inclusion criteria, there is an exclusion criteria, there is a particular protocol where it has to be randomized like this. And we got the data and we give it to government or the regulatory. Now, if it is a real world, it is not about, you know, the particular inclusion. So a wild population, wild number of patients, wild you know, demographic data or being evolved. So uh, those randomized clinical trial does a job getting to the market. That is a specific thing. Now, if it is not as you know, a randomized trial, we do have a real will to do it for every patients. And those data help us to understand the real you know, uh, uh, real therapeutic science because that was a randomized trial with a particular thing, yes or no question like. But in a real world, we are seeing different kind of changes. Now, if you see a change, we will observe more, you know, more patients, whether that, that change is a particular specific or it's a real change or not. If it is a real change, then we have to adapt and we have to inform the regulatory and we have to make the reformation. So those RWs are, you know, are the real world data from the doctors in the from the doctors who prescribes the drugs of ours. So once our drug come to the market, the doctor is being prescribing the drug and we are taking the evidence or we are taking that data for anything that is called real world because other thing was a randomized trial which a tightly populated people, populated in a patient where 
पोस्ट अप्रूवल और पोस्ट पोस्ट मार्केटिंग सर्वेलेंस वी आर जस्ट यू नो गिविंग इट ब्रॉडर पेशेंस वी आर ट्राइंग और अदर स्ट्रेटेजी बिकॉज मे बी द प्रोटोकॉल से इज ए प्लस बी ड्रग ओनली कॉम्बिनेशन बट यू नो फ्रॉम चेन्नई मे बी सम डॉक्टर हैज गिवन ए प्लस सी आई मीन सी मीन्स अदर कॉम्बिनेशन द ड्रग एंड विच इज गिविंग ए बेटर यू नो एफिकेसी देन ए प्लस बी आई एम सींग सो दीज आर द रियल वर्ल्ड एंड आई एम टेकिंग दैट डेटा that is called a real world evidence and that data will help us to you know share this knowledge to all other doctors in india saying that you know a plus c will give a better idea and doctor from in chennai has given a plus c and patient is been in a better stage or a efficacy and we got not only one patient we got lot of patients data and we you know give it as an evidence so thus you know other doctors also try to do which is helping the patient society now real world evidence where it comes as you know from the you know uh, mdr medical records from the hospitals or from the societies we can get or from the pharmacy we can get or from the surveys or from the ehr or electronic health records as you were doing projects also it's a real world evidence that you are doing because you are taking data from the mdr or you are you know doing an observation study and what are the important sources of real world data so retrospective and prospective real world designs can both provide important data to add which is apart from the rct rct has given or anonymous trial has given some you know outcome which is now currently present and your observation study or your real world data will help you know little more research to the rct which can benefit the patient as well as the company so again you know if you see the difference between clinical clinical um, control randomized trial and rw one i would say a randomized clinical trial is interventional because we are experimenting real world evidence is not an experiment it is a non interventional it is just you know i am taking the data, patient's data from a prescribing doctor so uh, both information solutions are valuable but they do have limitations so just you know going very quickly on the real world evidence um this real world data or your project's data will be helpful for the doctor's decision making because once you know you find something re really good your doctor is appreciative means you know that is a very good data or result comes and maybe the doctor will you know follow your things which is you know your evidences or he will discuss your evidences with the other doctors so that is called you know it is valuable for the physicians decision making what contributes to the strength of real world data when assessing outcomes large sample of patients means like you know maybe 500 or 1000 or 10000 will be the you know sample size and treatment a, a patient population because there is you know no bias in the real world just you know simply we are just uh, focusing all the patients and we are generating some evidences now you know uh, there is an interesting puzzle clinical trials which provide you know information on a broader range of patients um uh, and coming to rw which is giving a you know uh, last population multiple subgroup analysis from the same population again giving it a you know broader range of clinical settings means like going in a deeper indications that is long term follow up which can explore you know trial data into practice that is trial data gives saying like you know a molecule is giving better in b and you know you are asking the doctor to give it for b and he is giving it for b disease and you are exploring the data you are getting the data from the doctor it's providing you know long data on the safety and efficacy most important thing maybe you know all, all the trials will have a little adr or little ae events but on the real world is or on the projects like you know observation studies you are doing you will come to understand you know 
lot of safety issues or safety problems, which is not at all you know, noted in the clinical trials. So real world evidence builds a complete picture to inform patient's care. That's so where you know I would say uh, what the importance of a real world evidence or the you know the roadmap of the real world evidence from the clinical trial to the patients or to the you know people who is our neighbors or our friends or who is or being in a disease condition. What really matters now? Quality, quality, quality. You have to do whatever the studies or whatever the evidences you are taking, your quality should be high. There should not be any, any kind of you know, malpractice or any kind of you know fake data which will think okay, which can change the result. No, because if we are doing a real evidence, let it be just think like someone is some other you know uh, group or other people or anyone is also anyone can do also the same RWE. And if their result is different from your result, you know, then there comes in you know, a plagiarism or kind of, you know, um, a difference which will have, you know, a greater problem later on because your data is then, you know, it's a fake or it's a malpractice or it doesn't have a quality. So always, you know, in real evidence quality is the only matter with the time. Now, if I see, um, if I see uh, the jobs in the medical affairs, we do have, I, I was speaking about the MSL or second one, medical science liaison. We do have another role called medical advisor or regional medical advisor um, who being, you know, medical advisor is who, who is someone who is working in the organization or the headquarters or the office and instructing or giving guidance to the MSL to do the activities or the communicate whatever they want. So advice, medical advice will be in the office giving you know information or giving uh, instructions to the MSLs or our sales people to work on the strategy by the company. Now, what is the difference between RMA or regional medical advice and medical advice? RMA means those people or advices who is working in the field. Say, for example, I am working in the headquarters Bangalore and my RMA will be in Chennai. So those are the same, you know, we are in the same, you know, designation or role. But I have been in the office being connected with the all stakeholders, internal stakeholders, finance, regulatory, um, commercial, HR, everyone. But RMA is mostly, you know, involved with me and my doctors. So I. So that's the difference. Both, both, otherwise, both are same. So RMA is, comes from the MNC name. Otherwise, you will see medical advisor only for most of the people. Now, you know, MSL manager is another, which is all again a promotion. Then medical director is there, vice president, president, you know, and I would say, you know, like Dr. Viraj, CMO, chief medical officer as well. So um, it's not the eligibility of PhD, um, you know, more of other people in the competition that is MD, MBBS, and uh, BAMS, BHMS, MDS, BDS, and other even science, scientific academic, I mean, academic people as well. So a lot of co you know, competi uh, competition is there, um, but PharmD or PhD people always have a value in medical affairs, which we have to, we are creating and you have to follow. Now, just a, la a slide, you know, uh, what really, now matters or what really you're going to do uh, or how you can be a better, you know, create a better profile in the medical affairs. Yeah, sorry. So, um, how you can make a difference or being a farm D of studying or doing internship or working, how you can do better or how you can come to medical affairs domain. Um, I would say spina versus cortex, choice is yours. Um, the main difference is like, you know, those are the, the above things like, you know, knowledge, assumptions, hard work, manual and reading. Those in the above things are what you do or, you know, maybe I also did. But the down thing, the versus thing, 
is the real things what we have to now look after being a student or being a project intern or you know or working professional if you want to be a better medical affair professional just think like you know you have a greater knowledge no that's not the expectation you have to use your logic to get the things done now you have a lot of assumptions by your knowledge or by reading books or something but you will see a different thing that is the reality will be very different you have to accept that now you are doing a work from 8 to 5 you are doing a one small work from you know 8 to 5 9 hours but i do within a 3 hours that is called you know smart work you just calculate or do things in a manual way or just you know uh, counting like you know 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 6 like you can count with your hand like my 6 7 8 9 and 10 no i use calculator and i just say uh, 5 plus 1 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 so i use tools to do all kind of things uh, you know whether it is writing or whether it is uh, you know uh, like sales or whether it is you know um, reviewing your medical uh, you know pamphlets leaflets uh, everything we use tools for the better or easy things or that's the skill we have to achieve now read last reading versus hands on which means you read a lot of things or six years you studied you know six in the four 24 or 25 subjects you study in the farm d you have a lot of things but now you have to apply it means like you know research methodology you studied in the fifth year now you have to apply that research in you know that knowledge in the industry when you while you are working that which means like you know the observation studies or retrospective or cohort or you know uh, case report case series um, everything so those everything you read you no know, you have to make it in hands on you have to experience then you know you are better being medical affairs professional so i think you know i have just um, i mean taken much of the um things to be discussed generally if you want detail i can go but um, uh, let me ask to the you know the organizing committee uh, whether it's the time hello hi no sir it's out of time sir already okay okay i'm sorry thanks thanks because even i do have you know a lot of uh, inside things, uh, but that should be specific. So since my theme was, you know, a um, little more on the roles, what or I just feel like, you know, OK, I will say briefly, if you want a you know, detailed uh, medical affairs inside things, then we can discuss later on. But uh, for this time, you know, I would just talk from here and take your questions or take your feedback, uh, like how to go beyond the boundaries. So. Uh, it's QA section, and as we say, you know, uh, they say we learn from a mistake, but you know, uh, that's why I always do mistakes. So, anyway, anytime or uh, some someday I'll be a genius. That's it. Thanks. So, questions, please. If you have, I'm, I'm welcome to answer. I think no one have questions. Uh, anyone is having a question? Like you know, please unmute. Okay. How how can we touch with you? So I'm just you know giving uh, my giving my uh, you know. Information. Sir, I will share the LinkedIn profile in group, sir. OK, 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 sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. So, you know, um, thank you, sir. yeah, yeah, thanks. If you have any questions, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, get in connected with me. Yeah, reach out LinkedIn. In LinkedIn. yeah LinkedIn or you can email um, the LinkedIn. My name is Robin and rationally from the LinkedIn. You can get in touch. And uh, one more question. Uh, sorry, uh, actually, there is a question in the chat. Good evening, sir. Uh, 
uh, is PharmD alone uh, enough or, or we must have a MBA for medical affairs? So never, you know, it's a, it's a, MBA is a must thing, I won't say. But the MBA will be a great in addition if we want to become a manager. That's what I'm saying, you know, after five years or something. Now you start your career, you know, in medical affairs, going forward, you'll be a lead, then you'll be, in, you know, become a manager then going forward you being a medical director or vice president or someone uh, you know this will be an addition mba will be an addition that's all now sir dr pharmacy scope and job opportunity in the upcoming world and due to yeah so this is a entirely different topic i would say because i have taken uh, you know uh, the same you know need for internship and other opportunities so just giving it a one line shot i would say um we do have you know um Medical affairs, we do have pharmacovigilance, we do have regulatories, we do have medical writing, we do have academic like, you know, professors or assistant professors. And we do have hospital, pharm I mean, pharmacists. So I'm not a guy who can speak better on hospital, so I leave it blank. But other industries, we have scopes like, you know, medical affairs, clinical research, regulatory, academic and medical writing and sales also if you want. So those are the scopes and opportunities you have. Now, um, where to approach for an uh, infrastructure? Uh, so I didn't get to the question. Where to approach means like where are the companies or like how? Where, I mean, how to approach me? I, I'm not sure. Uh, so um, one more question. Um, so how big your journey is when it will accomplish? How vast or big your journey is? OK, so my journey was, you know, the, like Robert first, uh, you know, uh, book uh, the road the road who are taken less, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, the road not taken. Yeah, so I travel in the less road. I mean, less people who travel in the road. So it was a unique way of dealing it, getting the challenge, getting failed, then, you know, getting into medical. Office. So for me, you know, it was a entirely different journey apart from you because there was no one to guide or giving mentorship or at that time and I have evolved everything from the industry people or the mentors I do have. So those times were really difficult, but now, you know, now our I am being, you know, being mentored to anyone. Uh, why? Because I want everyone to know or get, uh, you know, um, benefited. It's not uh, knowledge I do take, you know, keep in my pocket. No, it should be, you know, diversified. It should be shared shared to all people all everyone should be benefited that's why i've been you know being uh, um, or helping people or giving knowledge or whatever i can do best to the our farm team now uh, for farm okay now one more question um, where to approach yeah okay for companies so linkedin will be the best advice i would say just start your linkedin if you don't and if you are a, a not an active member stop you know being active in instagram and be active in linkedin it's very good to go you know about being a student i i, I you know started from my third year and uh, those where i got the project or the internship where i did from the industry from the linkedin only even the internship i did so it's a better connecting platform and you can see all the professionals there get connected get knowledge and get success now one more question, um, what kind of extracurricular activities we can do as a student for the job role in medical office? So extracurricular activities, I would say, you know, you, you are doing a project, so do the best project, do the something, you know, not any like, you know, regular base area thing, just for the namesake, do something um, which has to be have a result, I would say, or outcome. That would really help, you know, once the paper is published, trust me, you know, I got in Biocon because of my project, because it was a product, Bivacizumab is a monoclonal antibody where it did. So that molecule is being branded or is being innovated by Biocon also. So there were, you know, during the interview, sort of there, there will be a lot of, you know, things to be discussed or which the interview will be knowing, okay, you are a knowledgeable person or you are fit for the job. How means those projects public, do public, do publicate and, you know, Get a, in a good journal also. Don't go for, you know, um, those um, local journal. Just, you know, go for at least, you know, good index, either Scopus or PubMed or elsewhere, whatever, but go for a good index one and do it for, you know, uh, giving a data or evidence to the patients or the society you are living and you will get benefited, I'm sure. And other uh, curricular activities, uh, you know, the um, engage in 
a conference in your medical college or wherever you have, you will come to know the speaker will be from the medical affairs. So get it connected and you, know, you do surveys or something or some, you know, some kind of um, surveys or any questionnaire, just publish because publication is a very important and addition thing in the medical affairs because uh, as much, you know, publication, as much evidence, science you have, you know, you are that much knowledgeable. And being a first author or being a corresponding author will be an, another addition also because being a fifth, fifth author or last, in every study, it's not good also because you have to be do your own thing also. Being a first author is another great important thing while you publish. Sir, uh, such a great explanation. Thank you. And I, I think, you know, out of the time, I, uh, I just discussed a little, but I think, you know, going forward, we can have a lot of discussion and, you know, a lot of things um, in any time later. Um, you know, I hope RX team would again, you know, um, support our medical affairs team. And uh, any courses, courses that we can discuss it later on uh, because there are a lot, uh, you know, a uh, lot of uh, aggregation like ACMA, Aggregation Council for Medical Affairs, or society like Medical Science License Societies. But we can discuss later on. Uh, what else uh, do I along with the PharmD? What else uh, do I along with PharmD? I didn't get the question very good. Uh, but I'm sorry, so, sir. How to do project like you to approach? So that is an again decision. Um, uh, just I would say. But do the project um, uh, get a good, good research? Is. Yeah, sorry, I will take a one more minute only. Uh, go, uh, do a good research on yeah. your uh, you know, thing, and you know, then get connected to LinkedIn, get advice from the you know industry peers or great professionals. Then you contact your college or then you go you know um, the, like say your staffs. Otherwise, they won't allow. So um, have a good research on your topic and then do it. People will help you. Thanks. Uh, I, I'm sorry because it's out of time. Thank you. Thank and my you, name sir. is Thank Robin. You, you can begin a link. Yeah. Thank you.